Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. If you've been in an abusive relationship or an abusive divorce for years, you likely have no idea what you want, what makes you happy, or what brings you joy. In this video, I'll help you rediscover who you are, where your joy lives, and what lights your fire. Please watch all the way through to the end, and if you find this information helpful, click subscribe. It's free for you to do, and it lets YouTube know this content is valuable and helpful, so it shares it with more people. Thanks. Okay, so abuse, gaslighting, the cold shoulder, silent treatment, name calling, passive aggressive jokes, learning to put other people's needs first. All of these lead us down a path of completely unpartnering with ourselves and having no idea who we are or what's gonna make us happy. This can show up in little ways, like you're out for dinner at a restaurant and it's your turn to say what you want and you just pick whatever the other person ordered you don't even really know. Um, it can be bigger things like feeling frozen in terms of shifting your career or moving out of a bad job or leaving an abusive relationship. Kind of like this thinking of, well, what else could there be for me? Like what else is even out there? For me, it took a couples counseling session for me to really realize how far away from myself I had gotten. This was years ago, um, and I was in a couples counseling session with my now ex-partner, and the therapist asked what I want. And I went into a full-blown panic attack. I was unable to answer that. My response was, well, it doesn't matter what I want. That has no relevance to this conversation. The point is, what does he want and what do I have to do in order to get him what he wants? And the therapist held me there. She was like, well, no, what you want does matter. So can you even just, you know, just one thing that you would like to get? And I broke down and completely started crying. I was shaking. I was full blown panic attacking. I had no answer for what I wanted. And what had happened was after more than a decade of being in a narcissistic relationship, I had learned any type of happiness or joy I attained would just be taken from me or used as a weapon. So it was safer for me to never experience real happiness or joy because then it couldn't be taken away from me or used to hurt me. Most people who have spent any amount of time in a codependent or narcissistically abusive relationship are gonna be on the spectrum somewhere of just self-abandonment and not knowing what makes them happy. So how do we fix this? In my experience and through my research, what I've learned is that there's two ways you get yourself out of this and you do both at the same time. The first one is starting to notice when your actions or thoughts are in support of someone else and at the expense of yourself. So this is just a fundamental self-awareness piece. It's starting to track your thinking and your choices and noticing when you've given up yourself for someone else. In the beginning, this usually looks like you figuring out you did it after the fact when you're reflecting on something that happened or you're reviewing your thinking around a certain situation. So in the beginning, you're not going to catch it in the midst of it or beforehand, you're going to just slowly start noticing after you've already given yourself away again. Oh, oh, I did that again. And that's great. You're on the path. You're doing it. As you practice this piece of self-awareness more and more, you're going to start to be able to notice it either as you're doing it or even before you do it and then make different choices. So I spent quite a few years actually in the phase of noticing I was just agreeing or giving myself away or going along with the plan even though it didn't feel good and I got that ping of awareness but there wasn't enough strength in me yet to say no I don't I don't want to do that I'm going to do this instead so I still was going along with this with the behavior and the thinking but there was that added piece of awareness of knowing that that's what I was doing and then as more time has passed now I catch myself way before I've agreed to do something, um, I pick up on that old feeling in my body of like, Ugh, there's some kind of like, there's a feeling. If you start paying attention, you'll get a sense of the energetic flavor or the vibration of it for yourself because everybody's different. But now I can get 
a whiff of it beforehand and then I just put on the brakes and maybe I don't even know what I want yet but I know that I don't want to be selling myself out and giving myself away so I'll just put on the brakes and say you know I need more time with this or that doesn't seem right for me I'll get back to you so piece number one is increasing your self-awareness around when you are thinking or choosing behaviors that are supporting others and selling yourself out this seems like a good time for a breath break ready <sighs> Remember that taking a deep breath moves us out of fight or flight and it gives us access to all the parts of our brain, including our thinking brain, so we can make better decisions. Okay, so the second step is practicing making decisions based on what you want. And this sounds so simple, but it really isn't. If you spend any amount of time in, a, in, a, in an abusive relationship or if you're in a high conflict divorce, this is going to be really tough. So we start small. I'm talking about things like which jar of pasta sauce do you want to buy? Yeah, you always bought that one. But like, which one do you really want today? It could be something different. Maybe you don't even want pasta sauce and you're going to pick something else, like something small like this, or I'm going to choose to have an extra shower today. Something really small. I'm going to choose to put on earrings or not. And then from there we can build more decisions. You can start asking yourself, if I had a magic wand and I could have anything happen in the whole world, what would it be? And now just notice when you do this, notice what blocks come up. Notice the voices that are like, well, you, there is no magic wand. Well, you can't have anything. Yeah, but what about this and what about that? Notice those and offer them compassion and empathy. Those parts of yourself are the part of yourself that gave up so many years ago because it wasn't safe and they're angry in there. They're fed up and they're discouraged and they need you and your love to come back online and start being brave enough, start having the courage to say what you do want. As we work with this question, what would I want if I could wave a magic wand and have anything? Those voices saying you can't have anything you want get quieter and slowly as you practice this, your voice of what you do want, your thinking of what you do want will emerge and it will be beautiful and exciting, I promise you. So it's simple, right? Two steps to relearn and rediscover who we are and what makes us happy and what brings us joy and what we want from this life. So again, those steps are increase your awareness of when you are selling yourself out and giving yourself away to make other people happy. And at the same time, step number two is start making tiny little decisions and asking yourself and prompting yourself around what do you want? What do you want? If that question, what do you want, triggers a massive amount of anxiety or fear in your body, it's okay. I've been there too. You're not alone and you can shift this. Check out the video I made about how to be with your own feelings. I'll link to it down below because that's the key. Just keep staying with those feelings and noticing them and they will shift. I really hope this video helped you. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Share this with the people you think it will help because that's the whole point and take good care.